Hi, my name is Mineko Kamura, and you are listening to the Sega Lounge. Hi, my name is Takumi Yoshinaga, and you are listening to the Sega Lounge. Welcome to the Sega Lounge, a podcast dedicated to our love for all things Sega, be it the games, the music, or the community. I'm KC. In each episode, I'll be talking to different guests and sharing their projects and their passion for Sega. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sega Lounge. I'm KC. Thank you so much for downloading or streaming this episode. It really means a lot. Thank you for sticking around for another week. Let me start this episode by giving a shout out to the Dreamcast Junkyard's Dream Pod podcast, which turned five years old this week. I had the privilege to record a very short message for their anniversary episode, so thanks to Tom for the opportunity. And please check out the Dream Pod for all sorts of Dreamcast related banter, including a pretty good concept I think they've explored in this year's April Fool's special. Do check it out. And do check out the Dreamcast Junkyard as a whole, as they're turning 15 years old this year. Amazing. When I set out to do this show back in 2014, the idea wasn't to be around this long. It was simply an experiment to prove that Radio Sega could have its own talk show, hosted by someone else other than me. As time went by though, I started realizing I really loved doing it and eventually I got to talk to some big names related to my favorite game company and my favorite games. This week's episode is one of those times when I get to talk to people who created something truly special to me and my experience as a gamer. Thanks to the magic of the internet, I got to go to Japan and virtually sit down with some amazing people. I was pretty nervous at first, and I think it shows, but they were super welcoming and what started as a simple interview ended up being a friendly conversation that will always be a highlight of this show for me. Oh, and stick around until the end, because I'll be giving you the chance of winning codes for Space Channel 5 VR. Welcome to KC's Swingin' Interview Show, Space Cats! This week's guests are two of the people behind one of my favorite series, Space Channel 5. Thanks to the magic of the internet and Zoom, I got to talk to Mineko Okamura, founder and CEO of Grounding Inc., assistant producer of the first two Space Channel 5 games and producer of the recently released VR game. I also had the privilege to chat to Takumi Yoshinaga of Sega of Japan story and game design director in the originals and story and game design advisor in the new VR game and credited in many other Sega titles throughout the years even contributing to some of them with music or lyrics. This interview wouldn't have been possible without the help of the amazing Takako Sakuma from Grounding Inc who served as a translator but as I'm sure you'll realize was much more than that during the conversation. Hello! Hi, hi. Hello! Hi! <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for coming on the Sega Lounge. It's very nice to have you here. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. So let's start by telling the listeners a little bit about yourselves. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the video game industry. Maybe we can start with Mineku, please. So first of all, she started her own career and she's working um, in the music uh, industry before. But actually she happened to meet one of the legendary, like the gaming, like a director, Tetsuya Mizuguchi. And actually they got to know very well. And he actually asked her, why don't you come to work with him? That is actually a starting point that she going to be involved in for the gaming industry. Interesting. That's very interesting. Okay. Uh, what about Takumi, please? So he said pretty much for him how he get involved for the gaming industry. Pretty simple. He, bottom line, he is a hardcore gamer. 
And actually, he's very interesting, have more uh, excitement and passion for the gaming. But at the same time, he was thinking he want to be a Japanese literature teacher for the high school before. But he was thinking whether he's going to be the teacher in the high school or the gaming industry. Hmm. Maybe it's going to be more sounds fun or more interesting to be involved for the gaming industry. He's very passionate for the gaming too. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. <laughs> okay, uh, Mineku, so apart from working on the original Space Channel 5, you also worked on other games like Rez. Uh, which of the Dreamcast projects that you worked on would you say is your favorite and why? That is a really the good question. Good question and the same that is very hard for her to answer the question because seriously, like each and every single like game title that she worked for is really important for her and gave her a lot of learning and lessons. But if you ask me what is my favorite, I would say still Space Channel 5. Because not only the game itself, her policy to working in the gaming industry, and that's the reason also she started her career to working in the like the music industry, is from her work, she just the point is like she just wants to make everyone gonna be happy throughout the music or either playing the video game. So if I say what is my favorite project is like she believes Space Channel 5 is one of the best game ever to make everyone happy and not harming anyone, not to feel sorry or anything, just simply happy to play the game. Very good answer. That's I agree. Yes, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay. Very good. And so at some point you, you left Sega. Mineko, what made you make the decision of founding a Grounding uh, Incorporated? So the reason she started Grounding Inc. as a, com about a gaming company, so the moment she was thinking whether she going to be starting her own career after she leaves Sega, actually she knows uh, one of the very uh, talented game creator. His name is Kutatsugi. He's very uh, known by a Panta Dragon, like a gaming director, used to work in, in a Microsoft and a Sega too. At the same time, she knows very well is that gaming, actually he's a um, main game director for the Switch on F5 VR. His name is Hotta-san. So actually those all three did a um, presentation to the Mr. Iwata you know, uh, used to be working for this uh, Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo. Yeah, so when they did a presentation to the one of the gaming idea to Mr. Iwata, he said, oh, okay, just go ahead into starting your own project. At the same time, she think, okay, so we start this project since Mr. Iwata totally agree with the idea they used to have. So, okay, we got to start some organization. So that's the kind of the point that she got to start her own company with Grounding Inc. Okay, very good. Uh, by the way, Grounding, is there a meaning to the name? Yeah, <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, that is a really a good question. Maybe like Grounding in the English, maybe it sounds a little bit weird. Some people think about more spiritual things. But actually, her point is, yes, we also want to everybody know the grounding and the meaning, the English word itself. At the same time, when she started uh, the company, since she's working in the entertainment industry, she wants to spread this like fun, like feeling, the entertaining moment to the each and every single person throughout the ground. So that's why grounding ink is, you know, you have to ground yourself into very deep into this, I'm not going to say universal kind of things, but it's going to be spreading each and every single corner of the world. So entertainment is really entertaining people, the human beings. So that's the reason she named the company Grounding Inc. People will have to be rooted into the experience yeah. of playing so the game. So once the yeah. people rooted into the earth, so we could spread just entertaining feeling in a moment to the people. 
Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So now uh, speaking to Takumi, um, you've worked on many Sega games in your career. Um, Hi. This is a difficult question, but which one was your favorite to work on? Or maybe a few favorites if you want to. So, this is the most so that is a good question, but if we, if I would say the special Net five is the one he loved the most because since he started working at the Sega the company, special Net five project is the very first project he did a presentation and that is the very first idea since he started working with Sega. At the same time, he has like Project Blood and a few the Magic, those uh, games also is one of the memorable game for him still. Mm -hmm. That's great that he that you mentioned that because my next question is actually about uh, the Rub Rabbits, um, mm -hmm. as we know them in 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 the West, the Rub Rabbits and Feel the Magic. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of our listeners' favorite. Uh, games mostly because thank of the you. soundtrack thank, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome it's they're great and the the concept the idea itself is is different so how did the idea for both games for both feel the magic and the rub rabbits uh came about so how did you guys come up with that idea so since the nintendo ds the one of the uh the game console is coming out in the world so maybe like Nintendo DS is the first like console that you could really touch in the panel and then playing through the game. So since he realized those functions, he coming uh, came up with those game idea because you know if we have a Nintendo DS here in the world, why don't we create some game you really touch in the panel and playing through the game? At the same time, you can interact with so many character in the game so that is the reason that he came up with the ideas mm -hmm, yeah it's really different uh, especially for us in the west i think outside japan because mm. the concept of uh, a, a boy and girls chasing yeah. each other that's that's really different and that's why i think some people really love those games as well uh so, 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 <laughs> so that is like, as you said, is maybe a uh, very interesting in the Western side, but actually this kind of like love story between boys and girls is kind of popular over here because since we have a lot of culture of manga things, animation, so based on like manga and animation, probably we are pretty much used to it, to seeing those like story between boys and girls and women and men. So he think that it's going to be much more going to be interesting to transform those kind of idea onto the game. At the same time, since Nintendo DS has a function to you really touching the monitor. So if we, if he could combine those functions, it's going to be more interesting. Not only you going through the game as a story wise, like anime or manga, but at the same time, you know, Nintendo DS have a new function to touch in the panel to play the game is going to be much more fun. That's true. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Very good. So let's move uh, to Space Channel 5 uh, sure. and the new Space Channel 5 VR kind of funky news flash. So let's start with th this. Que the next questions are for both of you. If you want both to answer or just one, uh, you decide. So how involved were you in the original Space Channel 5 games? So the original Special Net 5 game and the Sega, so Mineko worked for the planning and the marketing and also packaging for the physical version for the releasing at the same time. She worked as assistant uh, assistant producer, of course, uh, she been supported uh, to uh, Mizuhichi-san. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, Yoshinaga-san, since this is his very first project and this is the very first uh, the game for him. To, so actually he is the one to the source, you know, source and source of this uh, Special Net 5 game. So he actually was the one to um, making a game, even like this is a kind of very traditional, authentic move for the Special Net 5. 
right on left, up and down, chew kind of things is everything that he made. Mm-hmm. And story wise, and all the like the texting and the lyrics and everything made by him. Oh, okay. Great. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, any interesting stories or facts from uh, the development days that you could share with our audience? Anything maybe fun, interesting? So, so one of the memorable things that he had still from the original special device. So since like Ulala herself gonna be dancing in the game, right? So we need to capture the movement or the motion somehow. And all those days, back in like more than 20 years ago, so everything connected with a cable, not like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So, so every time they're working for the motion capture, so there is a person holding more than 20 cables physically. At the same time, there is a person working with a 20 cable. So that is that thing is really interesting to us. That's what he said. <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> yes. So uh, very different days, right? <laughs> yeah, 20 okay. years. 20 years of the time yeah. is very interesting. It's like a flash at the same time as everything changed. Now everything wireless, the things change at the same time, things make easier at the same time. Back in 20 years ago, this is interesting memories, right? Someone yeah. always do some extra work. That and makes it's... And it's weird to think that 20 years have passed, right? It seems mm. like it was yesterday. <laughs> yes, so maybe the people who have a really hardcore gamer for the special at five, they just realize, like, oh my God, like but 20 years, it really passed, but it is. But so that's yes. why like Lola came back with a VR. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. How did you end up deciding to use the theme of a news report show in space for the game? Because that's not, uh, you know, we think about a, a rhythm game, a music-based game, mm-hmm. dancing. Uh, maybe the first thing that you think about is not a news reporter in space, but that was the idea. How did that happen? So, so um, did <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So since you asked him for that kind of question, is like make him think about how come, how could I ending up for the like the dancing rhythm game and then actually well reporting whatever happening over there. So if you ask me the question now, I believe first of all he wants to make some game with a reporting show. At the same time, he wanted to make the game was based on the musical. So the musical itself is on the stage. You know, yourself gonna be singing whatever you're feeling, whatever you're experiencing, whatever the emotion you're having inside you by singing, right? So that's why he wanted to combine those factor of musical or recording show. So that is a kind of like a beginning point. If you ask that kind of question because first of all he said i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> if you since you're asking those kind of question if i need to think about it where i started for this idea that is the reason okay okay because it, it works great thanks <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so uh, Space Channel 5 and Space Space Channel 5 Part 2 were um, console-based games. Traditional, you have you had buttons to press, controllers. Now you're making a, a VR game. So how did the idea of making a, a VR special, Space Channel 5 game come to be? Why VR? Why did you think this would be a good fit? For the Space Channel 5 series? So, when Mineko has a conversation with uh, Yoshinaga san about uh, how can we bring back the Space Channel 5 again after 20 years of the time, so the Space Channel 5 
the game itself is dancing, dancing rhythm game. And by dancing, you're saving the universe. And then, but they really want to bring up the game itself. But at the same time, how could we, how, how could we bring back those ideas into the game? So since this is a dancing rhythm game, why don't we ourselves dancing and experience the game? Because like the uh, special, you know, special net five, one and two, you using the controller to control the avatar in the game, right? But if we really could put ourselves into the game and if I make ourselves dancing to going through the game, it's gonna be much more fun. At the same time, that moment like VR, the new technology coming up, they think about it, it's gonna be the good match for not only for the game match, at the same time concept about the Spech and the Five is saving the universe by dancing. So why don't we ourselves dancing to saving the universe? Yeah, it's much more immersive. So you're yeah. in yes. the game. And yeah. that is matching with a concept with a VR, right? VR is immerse yeah. yourself. Exactly. Immerse and, it. Right? And grounding, right? So you're right. really yes. grounded. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Yes. <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. Sure. <laughs> okay. How much time did it pass from the original idea to the game being released? From when you first started thinking and talking sure. about it to the game being released. Ah, uh, it's about uh, roughly like one and a half year. The starting point of gaming, you know, idea and things. Because probably the first uh, position, they're not really thinking about it going to be like a really the full VR game. First of all, they started for the VR kind of the experience through the session F5. Or toward the end, they uh, came up to the conclusion to making the full version of the VR games. Okay, okay. Uh, would you say, by the way, that uh, we mentioned the cables and the motion capture, would you say that uh, it, it was more difficult or easier to make this VR game than it was in 20, 20 years ago to make the original games? Uh, comparing the the experience, the traditional experience with the VR experience. Yes, there is so much uh, different mode of line. We making the game for the different console. Now we are making a game through the VR. So before, uh, special net by one and two, because uh, by changing the scene, your uh, experience will be changed. But VR itself, you already have like 360 degree angle side. So we got to think about how we make the player themselves to move and into and switching scene is difficult. Because like the before the console version, you're just simply switching the scene, switching the, uh, the screen. Yeah, the camera, camera. camera yeah. itself is changing, but now you already in the game. So how we let the player to moving into the different scene, that is the most difficult part. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, because the player themselves are, the players themselves are looking left and right and everything mm. has to be immersive, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Okay, okay, very good. Um, so the question next to it, were there any other members of the original team involved in the making of this game, apart from uh, both of you? So there is uh, so many people who used to work, especially in five is involving for the VR. We cannot count each and every single one. But if we say, first of all, uh, team, whoever taking care of the sound, like the music, is the original member from Special F5. At the same time, one of the art designer, uh, she actually in very involving for the VR project. Actually, she is the one who made a new character, the twins. Ru yes, rookies and the juggers, all the, like the new character coming up for the VR that are made by the original artists from Stitch and F5. And at the same time, like the motion capture, you know, Urala's movement or dancing movement and then Mororian's a little alien's movement is made by the original like motion capture. Okay, very good, very good, excellent. We already talked about VR being a good fit, a good platform for 
Space Channel mm-hmm. 5. That was the next question. Mm-hmm. We already mentioned that. Uh, let me move on to the next one. So some players have mentioned the, that the game is a bit short and easy. Do you, first of all, do you agree? And then was that the original plan or did you have to make adjustments during development? So first of all, yes, actually the game itself, maybe like people were saying a little bit short, but this is we already have planned from the beginning. There is a two reasons. First of all, like uh, it's going to be a little bit hard and not going to say difficult. It's going to be too much. Sometimes a uh, player uh, wearing the VR global for like long period of time, like three or four or five hours. If we just are playing the game through the console with a controller, it is okay to play like 10 or 12 hours or hand a day. But at the same time, VR itself, you wear the Google, you just yourself to uh, using your own body to prank through the VR. Uh, it's not sounds really realistic to uh, play like long, uh, those long uh, period of time. And the second, the concept of this game itself is kind of VR abstraction, like in the amusement part. So you can, so the major of the game, once you start the game, maybe you're fighting with the enemy and there is some point you be game over. But session five, there is no game over. You can come back anytime over and over again. And if you want to play for a longer period of time, you can. That is our concept. At the same time, we want to introduce mm-hmm. for the beer, uh, the game itself through the special Nefi so everybody could play the VR game, even whoever never introduced of the VR. Because it's kind of not a real, we are not going to say this is an easy game, but this is for everyone, for anyone. So because dancing rhythm game for women and men, even the kids, or the, whoever, really been playing the video game for a long time, it's for everyone and anyone. So that is a concept. Yes, yes. And the, the fact that you mentioned the, the VR headset, right? So if you're a kid, for example, and you're... We, you have the headset on for long periods of time. That could be tiring. That mm-hmm. could be, you could strain yourself. So that, that makes sense. Yes, yes. Yeah, at the same time, maybe that is, if we go back to uh, like the previous question, that is a point, uh, they working very hard because you even never know because a lot of people has uh, a little bit of uh, comment about a VR, the game is mighty will fit dizzy but no chess, we even never know, even like the hardcore gamers say, I might not going to be good at for the VR. So mm-hmm. we don't want to let them to have like those kind of experience. So third, the special F5, you'll be fine because this is for everyone and anyone. You don't need to be really going to deeper in the game, like three, four, 10, 12 hours again. This is a kind of abstraction. So you're going to be have more entertainment. You're going to be have so much fun. At the same time, this is a dancing rhythm game. By through the experience of dancing, if you feel good afterwards. Yes. It, it can be a good party game as well, right? So you're yes. maybe playing with others. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any plans for DLC for downloadable content uh, containing additional stages, game modes, other content? I uh, believe uh, you've announced Hatsune Miku coming to, to the game in some form or at least a costume, right? Hi, Hatsune Miku. So, yes, as you know, like we already planning and working so hard for to releasing for DRC for Hatsune Miku and hope whoever already tried the game itself, they're gonna be enjoying more a little difference with uh, uh, like the costume, a lot of things since Hatsune Miku, a lot of people already knew it, who the Hatsune Miku is. So I hope we're gonna be put a little more spices with the Hatsune Miku DLC. Okay, okay. Uh, any other plans that you can talk about right now or not really at this point? <laughs> so actually, if you ask us right now, so we are pretty much focusing on making for DLC of Hatsune Miku at the same time. We really appreciate it. We have a lot of feedbacks and commenting about not only the VR, a lot of people say, wow, we are really amazed. Like 
the game itself released back in 20 years ago, coming back to the VR. So actually all the comments and the encouragement to give us a lot of ideas how we could work better for the future for the special NFL. So stay tuned. Okay, very good. Stay tuned, Space Cats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This episode of the Sega Lounge is sponsored by Spaceport 9, the best docking station this side of the planet. Not only do we have the most advanced docking facilities for spaceships and cruisers and a state-of-the-art control tower, but we also offer a wide variety of services to our users. Check out the main lobby and the second floor lobby, or you can relax before your space trip. And be sure to browse through our duty-free shopping area before boarding your ship. Spaceport 9 one step to the galaxy. Spaceport 9 is not responsible for the likely event of an alien invasion by a race that forces everyone to dance. Another question regarding, you know, your feelings about this game. So you've worked, you, you've both worked on the original. What does it feel like to be a part of Ulala's return? Okay, so it's been a lot of time, as we mentioned, since the last one. How, how does it feel to be a part of this and to bring this franchise back to the people? So, uh, back in 20 years ago, in 1999, Tokyo Game Show is a show and a place that Sega and her uh, made an official announcement that Channel 5 is coming. And 20 years later, last year, 2019, Tokyo Game Show, we had a booth as a granting to make an official announcement that Channel 5 is really uh, coming back. So since she has a lot of like emotional moment that she has in the Tokyo Game Show, the gaming event. So since she, you know a lot of people is coming back to our booth and it really surprised, amazing. You know, oh my God! Like 20 years later, Space Channel Five is it coming back. So by seeing the reaction and getting a lot of encouragement, a lot of feedback. She feeling like she was like kind of dreaming and feeling very strange. Something even like twenty years of time passed, still the huge and solid like community, and there is a, so much fun to loving you know, especially by the game itself. The moment like that kind of moment gave it herself, so she doing the right, and she is right. You know, she was in the right path because throughout the making the game itself make the people happy through the game very good excellent uh, what about yoshinaga-san so first of all she he's a little bit concerned about it. is it okay to bring up a little bit old uh the game was released like 20 years ago but at the same time uh, throughout the, for the gaming event, seeing the people is really exciting. Like, it's really interesting. So 20 years ago, maybe the, uh, the, uh, the, play, uh, the people who ever played like 20 years ago, now they started their own family and they had a kid. So now two generations is playing and uniting and enjoying the same game. So it's a very interesting so even he worried about a little bit at the beginning but the end it's going to be interesting to see like two generations if you play the same game not like the game released 20 years ago at the same time they playing the vr game just released in 2020. yeah yeah that's good but by the way um were you not aware did you not know if space channel 5 was still popular or did you have an idea that people still love the original game? So actually when they started or like thinking about why do we bring it up for the special F5 again to the VR game, they even didn't expect it. There are uh, like a bunch of the, like the hardcore fans for the special F5, even they whether they remember or the game itself. 
So we even never think about if you know, is there any communities that existing really having got a, a lot of passion for the special department? It would be great to know. But at the same time, like uh, Yoshinaga said, that is also the one point is really um, happy to see that there are some of the people still remembering for the, all the fun time back in 20 years ago. But when project wise, we even never expected that all the fans are coming back to just like this, because we believe there may be some fans still here in Japan, but we never know and no idea from the other mm. country. Yes, yes, there are many fans outside of Japan as well. Yes, yes. I'm I'm one of them. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember uh, very fondly playing the original on my Dreamcast back in the day, so in twenty years ago. So that was a very good experience. I think Space Channel Five was my first rhythm game, the first rhythm game that I've ever played, actually. And because but of how, that, I played how others. How did you introduce the game? How did you find out the special effect 20 years ago through a Dreamcast? I think through a magazine, perhaps. Uh, a okay. games magazine, perhaps. I, I saw something about the game. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was different. Uh, the space reporter thing, <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Uh, I heard uh, good things about it as well. So I tried it. I decided to try it out and I loved it. <laughs> Did you own the Dreamcast already? Yes, yes. I owned the Dreamcast already. So. Okay, but so this is a kind of weird question, but how did you end up to buying a Dreamcast? <laughs> Because there is some other console too, right? That's true. I was always a big Sega fan growing up. Mm -hmm. oh. So I'm I'm uh, 36 years old. So mm -hmm. uh, I grew up with the Mega Drive here. I'm from oh. Portugal, from Portugal in Europe. Right, right, right. And mm -hmm. over here we call it the Mega Drive, just like in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I grew up with the Mega Drive. So I was always a Sega fan. It was okay. over here, it was Sega and Nintendo. And I was a oh, Sega, okay. <laughs> Sega kid. <laughs> oh, and so when, when the Dreamcast came out, I bought my Dreamcast uh, mm -hmm. and then bought games for, for the Dreamcast and Space Channel 5. I didn't know anything about it apart from <laughs> it being very interesting, very different mm -hmm. and a rhythm game. And so I decided mm -hmm. to try it out <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> oh, good. Is there yeah. any other game did you buy for the Dreamcast other than yes. Session of Five? Yes, 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 yes. And and it wasn't my first game. My first game was the Dreamcast with Sonic Adventure. Ah. And then Shenmue, Jet Set oh. Radio, a lot of a lot of games. Yeah. And Those legendary games. Yeah, <laughs> but but there there are many fans of the Dreamcast. Uh, especially, yeah. and also of Space Channel 5 over here. If you want to, I can uh, send you some some communities that oh, good. are online because, you about know the game. Since we had opportunity to hear those kind of feedback, I could use this opportunity to ask, you know, Yoshinaga-san to doing a little bit presentation. Maybe they're going to be have a little bit opportunity that we could bring up more legendary Sega titles into the new console, right? Yes, that, that, right? that's a good. That's a good idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he said he will try his best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, very good. So uh, let, let's talk a little bit uh, about VR itself. Sure. So um, I think VR was always seen as the future. For gaming, mm -hmm. do you think gamers now are more open to it than they were in previous years? Uh, there were other attempts to to make VR uh, more appealing to people. Do you think now people are more open to it? And do you think VR is the future of gaming? How we are all going to be playing games 10, 20 years from now? So, this VR, 自体はもう 
もっと一般化してほしい。Hope since the VR is coming up and every year, and then every single people say this year will be the year for the VR, this year will be the year for the VR. Actually, hopefully, he just hoping like VR is going to be more not going to the popular, it's going to be a just general one of the general console for the everyone to play the game. Maybe later on, like using um, maybe like. Not only for the controller or tracker, maybe VR is going to be more advanced. They're going to be allow us, hopefully, they're going to be allow us to use in the finger for the tracking. At the same time, about the gaming industry, maybe 10 to 20 years ago, he t h i n k we could use more technology of the camera, so we might not g o i n g to be need any more tracking system, like we only have a sensor and using our own body. To playing through the game. That would be interesting. Yes, yes. Okay.、Uh, those are some improvements to the technology that could happen and could help, right?、Uh, what about games? Do you think,、um, because not all game companies are producing content in VR, do you think that would also help in making VR more appealing to everyone? そうですね、あの単純に VR っていうのは。Not only for the technology or about、uh, the VR, the device itself, maybe like the speeding for the like our like internet connection and everything, or like a fundamental like environment is improved for the future. That's going to be allow us for the all the gaming industry to create more, not only the game through the VR and the AR, because now. Uh, a lot of like the, our environment is kind of restricting a little bit for the VR technology, only playing the inside the building or whether like a wireless or whether either like a wire. But if the, like the all the speeding for the internet, like for example, like 5G is going to be more popular for the everyone and anyone, maybe that are going to be effective for the gaming industry too and allow us more freedom. To play in a VR and AR, not only inside the building, probably everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Never thought of that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good, very good. Let's see what the future brings. <laughs> yes. Okay. So,、uh, thank you very much for coming.、Uh, it was really a pleasure to talk to you.、Uh, would you like to send a message to the fans that have already played? Space Channel 5 VR kind of funky news flash? So, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for the each and a single everyone who、uh, had opportunity to play the Space Channel 5 VR. So, personally, I myself never imagined to play the new Space Channel 5 ever in my life again. So, this is a kind of I'm feeling it's really a miracle as it happens. So, hopefully, whoever p l a y and e n j o y the game itself, please do share the miracle for each and every single one of you love the most in your life. So, thank you very much. Hi, it's a lot of fun. So, thank you so much, everyone, for playing the game. And thank you. Thank you to remember after the 20 years of that time. And at the same time, on behalf, on behalf of the Special Net 5 for the, all the crew members, thank you for saving the universe by dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, right,、uh, every time he's seeing a lot of tweeting on the Twitter、mm -hmm. or like the social networking services to people like the saving the universe, it's gonna be g a v e him more light. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, thank you very much. It's gonna be seriously, that is one of the things to be really blessed to be、mm -hmm. working for the gaming industry at the same time. You know, every time he sees those kind of feedbacks, it m a k e us so much happier. At the same time, you feel like and realize the thing that we are doing is really the right thing and it m a k e them happy. You know, throughout the make the people happy that m a k e us very happy. So thank you very much. That's true. And this is important right now. People need to have something to make them happy because of the current situation as well, the current yeah, problems. So So that, that's good. That's good that you guys can make games to make us happy. <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. 
you. Okay. So thank you. Very good. Uh, finally, what would you like to say to our listeners that haven't yet played the game? Um, maybe even those that never played the original games, uh, but you know, are listening to this interview, maybe are wondering about this new VR game. What would you like to tell them? So actually, the game itself created by Grand Inc. Actually, I already left the Sega, but I would say this Session 5 VR is very much like Sega game. Still. So if you ever a fan of the Sega games, you will be disappointed. So please, please, if you have a chance or opportunity to play that demo game, please do so. We want to make you down for sure. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> yes. At the same time, you know, the moment like we need to stay home just relaxing yourself at home this is a great opportunity for you guys because there is a lot of like tips and fashion for to make your body move so please if you're really frustrating to not to moving your own body please do so through the game it, it's good exercise yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, in the whole entire world, there are a bunch of the type of the game exists, but uh, I would say Special Night 5 is no stress, no harmful, no fighting, no killing, it's just fun game. So if you have opportunity to play the game, please just play the game and we hope it's going to be make you have a chance to letting God, whatever you're holding inside your body, just move your own body and pray the game, saving the universe. So hopefully that make you feel better afterwards. Definitely. That's a good message. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So I hope people listening to this really uh, enjoy uh, the game. <laughs> and if you haven't, if people haven't, they should try out the, the, the original games as well. They're great games as well. Great. So that's this is a good excuse, a good opportunity to come back to go back to those uh, previous games as well and try them out. Thank you very much for uh, agreeing to be on the Sega Lounge. All the best for, for the game and for future plans that you have, okay? And hopefully we can talk again soon. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thing. See you next time. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this interview as much as I enjoyed recording it. It was a truly special experience for me, if not a bit surreal, not only because of the people involved, but because it was done via Zoom, which is something I had never tried on the show before. Thanks again to Mineku Okamura, Takumi Yoshinaga and Takako Sakuma for their time and a huge thank you to Kerry Shuru of Strangely Compelling Media for setting this up. You're a legend! Be sure to check out Space Channel 5 VR Kinda Funky News Flash on the PlayStation VR if you haven't yet, and let us and Grounding Inc. know your thoughts. You never know what they might be planning for the Space Channel 5 franchise, and your feedback could be valuable. If you need help getting the game, it's giveaway time! Thanks to Grounding Inc. and Strangely Compelling Media, I have two codes for Space Channel 5 VR Kind of Funky News Flash on the PSVR to give to two of our lucky listeners. One for an European PlayStation account and the other for a North American PlayStation account. The way to enter the giveaway is to follow the link in the show notes that corresponds to your region. To avoid confusion, we'll have two different links, one for each region. So if you're in Europe, click the European link. If you're in the US, click the North American link. Easy, right? Follow the instructions and I will announce both winners on next week's episode. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Thank you for taking the time to download or stream the show. 
Remember, we've got new episodes coming out every Friday, with sneak peeks airing first on Radio Sega on Thursdays at 8 p.m. BST. If this is your first time listening to the show, please consider subscribing to The Sega Lounge. We're everywhere you can find podcasts, or you can just go to thesegalounge.com and go from there. Any feedback is much appreciated, so feel free to send me your suggestions or comments to kc at radiosega.net, and if you're in the mood, you can leave us a 5-star review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser, and I will love you forever. Thanks again for listening, come back next week for more interesting conversations and Sega education on the Sega Lounge. Bye bye The Sega Lounge Hosted by me, KC, and part of Radio Sega's network of live shows and podcasts. Theme song and incidental music by OSC. Find them at opusciencecollective.bandcamp.com Got any suggestions? Drop me an email to kc at radiosega.net Follow us on Twitter at The Sega Lounge. You can find previous episodes of the show by going to thesegalounge.com and wherever fine podcasts are downloaded.